Well, good morning again. It is Friday, which is always a very good day for trading options because lots of weeklies, well, all weeklies are expiring today. So you can pick up some option premiums relatively cheaply, uh, obviously with the idea that you manage your risk well. So this is Garula. Thank you for joining us. And I want to say good morning to everyone. And remember that past performance is no guarantee of future results. So Dave, Princess and I were just talking about this wild, crazy market. And, you know, that on some occasion, on a couple of occasions, you know, we've gotten out of trades and it kept going in our direction, right? So we didn't make as much as we could have. But the important thing here that we talked about and I reiterated is protect your capital risk management at all costs. And if those trades that turned against us, which is what we were thinking was going to happen, uh, and we tried to stay in, you know, it would have been rather disastrous for our account. So I don't mind making less. I just don't want to lose more. So risk management and discipline, you know, the thought would be that, and I was saying earlier before we got interrupted, Princess, was that if this account that I have, which, you know, on close of business, close of market today, open Monday should be at $1,000, not quite there, you know, at seven, currently at 774, I guess, because I have an open trade that I swung yesterday, which was probably not wise. Uh, but, you know, even if, if even if instead of making 10%, which in four months would result in a half million dollars, which is the ideal, and has to be extremely, extremely difficult, and you have to be extremely disciplined, and you have to get, you know, a lot of things right, even if I don't make that mark, if I only make 5%, that's still $250,000. If I only make 2.5%, you know, it's like hundred. that's over $100,000 in four months on, on a $500 investment. So you can't really argue with the math. What's most important, though, is to minimize and just, again, just continue to state this, to minimize your, your losses, to protect your capital, ex exercise good risk management, and to be disciplined. So I made some mistakes. Fortunately, it's worked out so far. But the key is to correct mistakes that are made and to not repeat them. So we're going to try to do that in the next you know, few weeks as we are trading in this very volatile market. So what has your experience been so far, Princess? When you say experience, what you mean with the market? Yes. Yes. What have you? Yes. What has your experience been? Um, I guess right now with the volatility, um, prior to this, I wasn't really sure what to do, you know, so I really wasn't doing a lot of trading, um, just to be transparent trades here and there, but nothing like, um, what I've been doing here lately. So just the right. volatility. And I noticed that the premiums are higher and I guess that's from the volatility True, yes. And they're even higher still when you have stocks that are either within a couple of days of earnings or maybe a day after earnings for the very same reason, the implied volatility. So because of the bigger moves, then the volatility, the premium increases because you can either, you can make a lot more, but you can also lose a lot more. So it's really important, again, to make sure that we make some good decisions going forward. And, you know, David called this down open, which I'm uh, certainly expecting. But I think that the reason why I like Apple, and I mentioned Apple on the open, uh, the reason why I like Apple is I marked off the weekly ATR on Apple. And... The ATR to the downside for Apple is met at 156.54. So what's interesting about that is Apple, the previous low last month, 
is 155.38. So that is below, or that is that exceeds the weekly ATR. So looking at the candles here this morning as well, looked at the hourly chart when I was speaking. We've got a, a hammer, an inverted hammer, and looking for a bounce off of this support level at 155.38. Because again, this is the previous low from the month of April. And Apple has an inside candle. So if you're familiar with the strat, this is the high from April and this is a low and the high is lower than the March high and the low is higher than the March low. So I, so the thing is you're looking at this, when Apple crosses beneath this low from April, it would really trigger a purchase to the downside puts with a target of the low from March. I don't know it's gonna get, it's not gonna get there, it looks like this week, but it could next week. Uh, because I think given the fact that we're at the ATR for the week, I think Apple is going to recover some of what it's lost, but we'll, we'll see. And I think trading to the upside is what we wanna to do today. At least that's what I'm looking at doing. I'm looking at the VIX. So the VIX has some pretty good resistance here, but I, when I'm anticipating, I agree with David that the VIX is gonna to go to 38. Not sure if it'll get there today. Uh, and we had this big W, which I had marked previously, and I said this VIX opened above 33.84, and it did on that particular day. It climbed above that number. Then 40 was in play to the upside. I still think that is true. I think VIX 40 uh, is in play, 38 to 40 is, to the, is in play to the upside. Not so sure if it will happen today, but next week we could get that. So what the VIX could do is decline and find some support here at 3073 and then start to make us move back to the upside. Or if it climbs, it could hit this resistance here at 3384 and then decline. So we're just gonna watch both of these and really try to make the best decision that we can. And I'm going to pull up Airbnb. I like Airbnb as well uh, because Airbnb, the ATR is met at 138.50 uh, to the downside, but I don't know if it's gonna get there. It looks like we're gonna bounce here on this algorithmic support and resistance level. So if I go to a one hour chart, uh, we sort of see the same. But again, looking at Apple, so let's get ready for the market to open. And let's find what we're going to consider trading on Apple. So we're gonna try to buy the, looks like the 15570. if I can get this on the open here. So the 157.50 is what I should have said. All right, so I'm gonna be in this trade and my plan is to, I'm only buying one to keep my risk down. It looks like we're gonna run into some trouble up here around 157. So I'm gonna mark the opening low here for Apple as being here. If we break this, then I'm looking at support here at 155. And I'm just gonna stay in this trade. Uh, yesterday, 
got into a trade on to the downside with AMD and of course um, I could have stayed in it all day and I did not so I should have just traded AMD yesterday and been satisfied with that so I'm going to make sure I don't make that mistake again today so probably we'll stick with an Apple trade up and down now just but just outside the money because the premiums are a little bit cheaper today. And it looks like we're doing okay here. This, this is gonna be a critical area of resistance for Apple because we have both this algorithmic resistance level and its ATR trailing stop. If we can break this resistance, then Apple will be good. Uh, looks like up until about 158. So again, we just got to break this resistance here. Going to be a little patient, not uh, not be too concerned about the move down because we're sort of expecting the volatility, but don't want to put too much at risk. So we're gonna keep our eye on what's happening overall with this. I'm gonna move this opening low down. All right, so the key here is to, this is a key level, it's 155.38. We're expecting this to hold. So we've got an upward move on the VIX. And the VIX could very easily hit this 33.84 and then decline. But again, patience is key. So we've got a, an inverted hammer forming here on Apple on the 30 minute chart. All right, still gonna move this down. Feel fairly comfortable with the decision because of the fact that Apple has exceeded its ATR for the week don't think it's going to stay down here today. But it is testing this previous month's low. So one of the things we could do, but we're not going to incorporate that in our strategy today, is we could offset this with a put on the spy as a hedge. But that's adding an element of risk that we don't want to include. So now we have an opening high. This resistance was a bit much. Change this. I'm going to let this candle close. If this candle closes and we get the next move down, then I'm going to exit this trade. So looking at the VIX, looking for a rejection at 33.84, at least initially. So again, once this candle closes, 
if the next candle is red and then gives us a lower low, then we would look to exit. All right, the VIX is through that resistance at 3384. It's currently at 3394. So keeping an eye on that. Thirty four oh seven is where the VIX is. Spies at 408.26, the VIX just jumped to 34.25. All right, so we're going lower. All right, so I'm gonna exit this trade. It may be too early, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm not caught uh, to the downside. So I'm gonna exit this and wait for another opportunity. So ideally, again, we would wait for the opening high and opening low, which I did not do, I jumped in early. And we got out, of course, the right time, at least it appears so. Without taking further losses. So let's take a look at Airbnb and let's see what's going on here. Uh, so everything's moving down. So travel is probably going to be strong to the downside. In fact, the VIX is going to find some resistance here. So even though we get some recovery in Apple, we're going to wait for a signal Either it's going to break the opening low and continue down, or it's going to find some support and then give us a signal for the upside. And looking at SPY, we're going to mark SPY as well, because this is an opportunity to trade SPY on today. Looking at 420 on the SPY today. I'm looking for a 420. Oh, sorry about that on the screen here. Let's take a look at the VIX and see what we've got on a daily. So this is the HR trailing stop. That's going to be pretty strong resistance, which we saw yesterday, a rejection here. All right, so it looks like we may have an opening low that gets set. I'm going to edit my watch list because I have too many things in here. So we're gonna keep Apple. We're gonna keep Spy. We're gonna remove all of these. All right, so we have an opening low, it looks like on Spy also. Opening low for VIX, and we're going to mark the opening high here, 34.45, so we can keep an eye on that. All right, so we're just going to watch the candles here because we don't have any, any real signal yet that Apple is going to reverse to the upside. Uh, we did risk uh, a little bit of our capital. And we're down on that trade, but we have 
the ability to recover. So it makes sense, apparently. Uh, and, and of course, we know this. I was trying to take advantage of the volatility on the open. I missed it uh, just to be patient and to wait for clear direction. That usually doesn't come until 11, but you can use the opening high and opening low to get some idea about what the market's going to do. So I'm looking at both the BWAP. I'm also looking at the EMAs, the HR trailing stop, uh, the VIX may not be done yet. If that's the case, then what's going to happen is both SPY and Apple will get rejected here. So let's take a look at SPY on weekly just to kind of see where the ATR is on the weekly. I didn't check that on SPY. So the weekly ATR on SPY is 1851. And the high was 429.66, 429.66 minus 1851. So 4.11, 4.11 is where the ATR is met to the downside on SPY. And we're currently at 408. So again, expecting SPY to move to the upside uh, as with Apple. And for the VIX, we're looking at a low of 2494 plus 808. 33.02, so the VIX has exceeded its ATR as well, has exceeded its ATR as well. So we're going to keep that in mind as we trade today. So based on those two premises, could have stayed in Apple uh, to the upside, but the risk is what we're trying to manage as well. So we exited that trade because even though it may be a higher price than where we exited, the fact that it has not started to move to the upside and it's going sideways mean time is working against us. And the fact that the VIX is climbing uh, like it is is not necessarily in our favor. So the VIX now has a new opening high. So we'll move this up here. And the SPY has a new opening low. It would be nice to see an inverted hammer here on the SPY, which we did just see. And the VIX has a new opening high. It hasn't formed yet. Apple is consolidating here along this lower channel. So we are ex looking for a move to the upside on Apple. No clear indication yet of that happening.
So we've got this spinning top, which you know signals reversal. We've got this spinning top here. So looking at the spy, the spy is continuing to fall. Apple is not following. The VIX is continuing to climb. And Apple is consolidating. So again, looks like we're going to get a move to the upside on Apple at some point. We just have to wait for it. The VIX keep making new highs, but the VIX is approaching this ATR trailing stop, which could be a critical turning point. So we'll just watch. All right, so Apple is holding. The VIX just hit 35.21. The ATR trailing stops at 35.37. Thirty-five, thirty-two on the VIX. We're testing the opening low on Apple. I imagine the spy is falling like a rock, and it is. So we could have used that spy trade to offset as a hedge on the Apple trade to the upside, but again, that just introduces an element of risk that we're not willing to take. So, David, are you in any trades? You swung a couple of things from yesterday? Um, yeah, long VIX, short S&P. I mean, we're, we're more hedging because we're long a lot of stocks. So we yeah. use VIX and S&P to hedge. Makes sense. So really, if we lose on the VIX, it's good news for us. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, the VIX does make a good hedge for sure if you're long. So it looks like the VIX is getting rejected up here at this ATR trailing stop. So we're going to keep an eye and see if, in fact, that does happen. But we look like we have an established opening high right there. So that, if that is the opening high, this is going to be really strong resistance for the VIX. So we could look for a move now uh, to the upside. So we got a spinning top here. We're looking for this candle to close. Looking at the SPY. Uh, SPY looks like it's found its bottom, maybe. All right, so I sold my Apple calls at 48 cents. So I took a loss. They're currently at 41. It's another spinning top. So I would be to buy them back cheaper. Now, the problem with that, though, is I'm going to pay, of course, another transaction fee. But the idea is to protect my capital. So I didn't want to take a substantial loss. So if Apple had continued, and we don't know yet what's going to happen. If Apple continues to the downside, I simply would have just simply lost more. I wasn't willing to do that. The loss was big enough as it was. So I'm going to try to recover from that trade here by finding another entry. And watching the VIX, because again, that entry could be if VIX breaks through this upside channel here. And then we go to a 30 minute chart, maybe a daily chart. The VIX breaks through here, then uh, that 38 could be in play for today. If it does break through and find support above this eight year trailing stop and it's opening high because that's the next level we have is 37.68. In that case, we might have to abandon our Apple trade and find something to the downside. 
we were trading AMD yesterday and we're in puts on AMD. And this is a really wide opening high and opening low. So we'll keep, we'll add AMD back on to our list. Let's see, Fortinet got upgraded. That upgrade didn't help them at all. Looked at Devon for the possibility of trading it to the downside. Uh, that would have been the right trade to take. Devon met its ATR, which was at 62.97. It's still way above that, uh, as we can see. And based on that, I was looking to trade Devon to the downside. Didn't get in it, but we'll we'll just kind of keep it on our radar. So there may be a buying opportunity for Devon. All right, let's go back to Apple. All right, so the opening low is still holding. Apple is currently at 38 cents now. I mean, as we move to the right, time erodes the value of the option. And we may break to the downside. And if so, we may have to trade Apple to the downside because given that we're in this monthly strat, then the target would be 150. It's only $4. Apple could hit that and then, of course, turn around. So we're going to keep an eye on this if we break this low. So it looks like the VIX is trying to make it above that ATR trailing stop. And AMD could still be a good trade to the downside. Because we're expecting it to continue based on this hammer here at the top. It is very volatile to say the least. This was the ATR trailing stop on the one hour. All right, so still watching Apple. A lot of option activity on the SPY. A lot of puts. Some on Apple, not as much, but on the SPY, uh, there are lots of people trading SPY to the downside. All right, so again, we've got this support level here. And the key, again, about the opening high and opening low is it just identifies for us support and resistance. So this still seems to be holding, but if we get a candle that closes beneath here, it could signal a downside move, but we don't have any indication yet about real direction for Apple. It is below the five-day EMA, which is a challenge. If it closes above the five-day EMA and we get some indication that we're going to get a couple of candles that close above the five, then we would look to enter a trade to the upside. This looks like it's going to signal a reversal and a bounce off this opening low, but we don't have confirmation. So on the VIX, showing some weakness, it's starting to not continue with this parabolic move. It's sort of starting to crest here. So we may be getting a top. The SPY, the opening low is holding. Apple. We're getting a candle that signals, again, reversal. So this move here, and then this is spinning top, reversal, spinning top, reversal, spinning top, reversal is coming, spinning top. 
And all this is happening at the bottom of the move from here at 157.80. So this is where it started pre-market. So these candles are signaling a reversal, but we don't have any real confirmation yet because we've got this five-day EMA that is above and giving us some resistance. So we're still, we're testing this opening low. And looking at the VIX, we're going to test this opening high and this ATR trail and stop. So if the VIX climbs here and finds support above here, uh, then that could signal some real trouble. So it's quite possible that when the market turns, that it could be as violent as it was yesterday to the downside and the day before to the upside. Just don't know when that might happen. So it's 9.58. So we're still looking for a reversal to the upside here on Apple. The options premium has been holding pretty steady around 37, 38 cents for that call that we got into. We originally paid over a dollar for it. So we lost quite a bit on that one trade. But we would expect to make that up on the right trade uh, if we can get the right execution and get in at the right time. Had I waited for the open, say, given it, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, then that would have been the ideal scenario. But fortunately, only bought one contract, so the risk wasn't that great. It was great for a small account, but it wasn't that great. And again, could have stayed in it, but just didn't want to take the additional risk in the event it was to move against us. Hindsight, as David says, is 2020. So hindsight says we would have stayed in the trade uh, because it held here on the opening low and we would have avoided paying for another fee and then we wouldn't miss the upside move. But we still don't know yet. But it's a good sign that we're holding here and we're getting all these indications from these spinning tops that Apple is going to reverse. But as you can see, that five-day EMA is pretty strong. I'm looking at a two-minute chart, and it tells me that we have reversed here. And Apple has found support. So I'm going to go back to my five minute and if this candle closes here. Actually, it's about to hit the VWAP on the two minutes. So I'm going to wait and see how it handles that VWAP. because we don't really have any volume here yet, but it's the beginning. So this is a new candle. So just hit the VWAP on the two minute chart. And I'm looking at the candle getting rejected. If it is able to close on the two minute above the VWAP, that would give me some comfort on the move to the upside. Again, just trying to be patient and waiting. And the SPY
Looks like a good trade also. All right, so we have time for this candle to close. I'm not going to be a person that is concerned about missing out. So no FOMO. We're going to be patient. So I'm seeing Apple get rejected at the VWAP on the two-minute chart. The question is, will it then hold on support? So if we get a close above the five here, and we get another candle above the five, then that would signal us, signal for us an opportunity to look at Apple to the upside again. Discipline and patience. And based on my earlier trade, I exhibited neither of those. So I am going to correct my behavior. And we've got a pop on the VIX here to the upside. But this is a shooting star. So that signals reversal. Spinning top, spinning top, shooting star. So looking for a reversal here on the VIX. Oops, bring this back into view. All right, so it looks like my second candle on the two minute is gonna be above. So I'm gonna buy back in to this Apple trade to the upside. And I'm gonna stay in this this time. Given what I'm seeing on the VIX and what I'm seeing here on the two minute on the VWAP, and let me just go to a two minute chart, pull up the VWAP and show you what I'm seeing. All right. so. This is the VWAP, this purple line. And what I saw was Apple actually was here and then it was able to close here. And when I saw this candle in the five minute coming up to cross the VWAP, then that signaled to me an opportunity to make a trade on Apple to the upside. When the five day EMA crosses the VWAP to the upside, that indicates momentum and signals strength to the move. Same thing if it's to the downside. So if we go to a one minute chart, it gives us an, another view. And then of course to five minute, which is where we started now. So ideally, rather than taking a trade on the opening, which was really FOMO, fear of missing out, you wait until there's some clear indication about direction, which may, may not happen until you've marked your opening high and opening low. And then once you've marked the opening high and opening low, you can watch the candles and make some determination based on the candles about direction. So we've got this ATR trailing stock coming back into play. 
now. So we hit it here. And then when the price lowered, then the ATF trailing stop moved down. We got this opening high. So now we've got quite a bit of resistance in this area. And we've got a 200-day EMA coming down as well. So if we break this resistance here, then Apple should be able to make a nice move to the upside. Now, if we go to a 30-minute chart, we'll see there's even more resistance here at 158. So that's going to be our target, uh, 158. 35 thereabouts. And then on the one hour, 160. So we're going to be watching Apple closely at those levels. We want to see it break this ATR trail and stop here. And we have about two and a half minutes for this candle to close. So we've taken two trades today. The first one was rather disastrous. However, uh, we understand that it's not difficult to recover. We want to try and avoid having to recover obviously by making better decisions. So again, patience and discipline. So I still have $600 to trade with for the rest of the day. And I paid 49 cents for this call. It's currently at 50%. So that's not bad if we can make a couple of different trades like that then we will be doing okay so it would be nice to be able to stay in this one trade uh, for as long as we can with the idea that we're looking at a 158 target so we've got the VIX Still below here, but the VIX could find support at 33.84. This is a shooting star on the five minute, which is a bullish signal. So we need Apple to get higher in order to not form a shooting star. I'm sorry, it's a bearish signal, not bullish. But we did have good solid volume. So we're going to stay in this trade a little bit longer. So my profit is diminishing because Apple is declining. It hit this ATR trailing stop. You can see how significant that is. So the, this is the first time, and we expect the first time it hits resistance for it to get rejected. But we do have support here at the 20 day EMA, the five day EMA, and this low from the previous month, that's all support. We have this resistance here at the 50. So we need to get above that and then that will become support. But looking at the VIX, the VIX is gonna give us some trouble. Uh, the VIX here shows a hammer on this move to the downside. So it looks like it's going to climb again, which means Apple could decline as the VIX climbs because we've got a shooting star candle on Apple. A couple of things in our favor, though. Apple has met its ATR for the week. So that gives us some comfort. We're expecting this is going to be an indication of reversal. And that reversal could happen if we don't break this area of resistance. So we're going to watch this really, really carefully. 
looks like it's going to hit it a second time. So again, as you hit resistance multiple times, the resistance weakens. These are, this just simply represents sellers here. So people are selling at this level. So once they have been cleared out, then there'll be room for Apple to continue its move to the upside. All right, so watching the VIX, the VIX is getting rejected here to five day EMA, which is good. And looking at SPY, SPY has now found support. This is a, this is an inverted hammer at the bottom of a move. We're expecting SPY to go to 420 today. That would be a really strong move to the upside. And we're expecting Apple to power SPY higher. All right, so we're testing this resistance again. We may not break it this time, may take a third time to, to break through, but we're expecting this to get broken, this ATR trailing stop. All right, there we go. So not done yet, so we need a candle to close. We still have two minutes for this candle to close. But we like the volume. The volume is growing. You can see that here. Looks like the sellers are trying to hang in there, but the buyers look like they may overpower them. So. <clears throat> We made two trades so far, lost on the first trade, lost more than we should have because didn't exit fast enough. However, we did exit and protect our capital from a further move, from a further downside move. And now we're recovering with a move to the upside. So now the next level of resistance is this algorithmic support resistance level that I draw based on the monthly candles. And you can see how significant and accurate it is. Uh, this has been in place for quite some time and it, it's recognized clearly uh, by Apple as a place where there are sellers at this point because this is resistance. First time it hits it, it is likely to get rejected but we have lots of support now. So we have this former ATR trailing stop. And we're going to close this candle in about 15 seconds. If we close above this, even though it won't show, it shows down here, there's still going to be support at this level. So we have support here, 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 and here. So we are comfort comfortable in our trade to the upside. All right, so we've got that close. Now we're going to test the opening high. We want the opening high to become support. So we need a candle that closes above the opening high. And then next above this algorithmic resistance at 157.37, and then above the 200 EMA. And at that point, we will feel fairly good about our trade. So my Apple call is up 123% right now. Had I bought that uh, on, the, on the open instead of buying on the open, then that would have been a really nice trade. So that's a gain of 60, $64. And to meet my 10% goal today, I only needed to grow my account by about $75 or so. So similar to what we did yesterday with the trade to the downside on AMD, that one trade resulted in a total gain for the account of 11%. And of course, uh, had I finished the day and walked away, I would have been good. But of course, I gave some of that back on some subsequent trades, which were just not necessarily the, the right direction. I traded against the market rather than with it. 
So we're going to break this. Looks like uh, we have still have three and a half, three minutes and 15 seconds, but we're going to break this, it appears, this resistance. And now my account is finally positive after being down 9% based on my first trade this morning because you lose money much faster than you gain money. Uh, now it's up just about 0.5%. Apple is up 181%. So now I'm up 2.5%. So that was a good trade. Uh, let's check the VIX. Uh, the VIX has fallen through support. So that's good. So we should get a strong, strong move. Apple is above the 200-day EMA going towards that 158, which is where we're going to actually mark some resistance so that we can keep track here. So 158, 35. I'm going to mark this and I'm going to watch here carefully. 158, 35. We may exit here just to protect our gain and wait for it to break it. ATR, trailing stop. Can't type. 30 minute. All right, we're going to make it purple so we can see it. Go back to our five minute chart. All right, we see it getting, you see Apple getting rejected here. So just going to keep an eye on this. 205%, 213% on the gain for Apple. My total account value is up now 5.6%. Put my finger on the sell trigger, but looks like Apple is going to do us some justice. Next target is going to be 160. My total account value is now at 8% for the day for my total account. So I've recovered 9% now. I've recovered. Uh, everything lost. And so that's a big swing. So I was down 9%. Now I'm up 9%. So that's an 18% gain if you if I had taken this trade only, which would have been nice. But hindsight's 2020. Right, Dave? Exactly. Great call. We, we sell our VIX calls and uh, covered our, our short S&P for about... Yeah, my Apple trade is now up 317%. My total account value is up 12% for the day. We're approaching one, we're approaching 160, which is where the next level of resistance is. I'm going to switch to a two-minute chart because I'm going to be looking for an exit here, at least uh, some indication that I'm not going to give back all my profit. So. I want to see continued support. Now I'm back down to 7%, my total account value. So again, we can make another trade because we have capital and we can protect these gains here. And let's see what Apple, is, we'll see what Apple's struggling with. They're struggling with this ATR trailing stop on the 30 minute. Uh, we have it marked here. So this needs to hold as support. If it holds as support, then we're good to stay in this trade. If it if the five day EMA can get here on the two minute, then it's quite possible that this is going to hold, and we would stay in this. Then our next challenge is going to be the one sixty nineteen. I'm going to mark this on a different screen. You can't see me, but one sixty nineteen. That's the ATR trailing stop on the one hour. So we're going to mark that one as well. All right, so we're watching carefully. We see weakness, obviously, here in this move. And again, we can always buy back in to the move.
So we're going to just watch Apple here and We want to carefully keep an eye on this level of support. This is a two minute chart versus five. So the difference looks like this. We don't see any real support here other than here. So we're just keeping our eye here on this two minute chart, which will tell us whether or not the support level is going to hold. We use a two minute for exit, not for entry. Five minute for entry, two minute for exit. And even a one minute chart can be good for exit. So if we looked at a one minute chart, we'd be looking at something like this. We would have been out of this trade, um, probably right here. So this is a one minute chart. So we need to see Apple get above the five day EMA if it does not then if it doesn't close above the five-day EMA on this candle, then we may have to consider taking our exit and just uh, whatever our profit is. So this is a one-minute chart. All right, so I'm going to take my profit. Well, I'm trying. Let me see if I can't. can't sell fast enough. All right, so I'm going to just have to give this some time and trust my charts because I missed my exit. I couldn't get out fast enough, so I simply cancel my order, and I'm going to trust my charts here. Go back to a two minute chart. And we're still good. There's obviously some strong resistance here at this 30 minute ATR trailing stop. Still about 225% on this trade. Looking at a two minute chart, we are still above support. This would be a hammer this was a downside move. So this would be bullish. The volume declined significantly on that move to the downside. And when I executed my trade or tried to exit, I was selling on the bid and it was moving so quickly, uh, I didn't get filled. That's just the level of volatility that we're dealing with. So let's look at the SPY. The SPY is a V-shaped reversal. The VIX. The VIX is declining. We're going back to Apple. All right, so it looks like we're good here. All right, so 350% gain. So up 13, 14%. So the next resistance level in play is 160. I'm not going to 
test this too too much. I'm gonna look for again on a two minute chart. I'm gonna look for an exit because again we've we've got a gain of 316 percent right now. If I can sell this at the top here, uh, the ask is the high for the day on this particular option was 230. If I can sell this for 230, it's currently at 199. I'm going to take it. On the next move up, I'm taking my profit because I'm seeing weakness here. Actually, I'm going to take it here. All right, so not too bad, uh, not as good as it was. I had a profit of, I was up 13% in my total account. I'm only up seven for the day. But uh, looking at this weakness here, I think uh, I didn't want to risk giving back my profit. So just like we saw at the bottom here, we saw all of these candle signaling reversal. I see the same thing here at the top. And, and the reason why I'm getting out is I'm on a two-minute chart. And this is an ATR trailing stop on the 30-minute. Apple is obviously having trouble with this resistance level. So I'm not going to take the risk. I'm going to get out because I can always get back in, right? So so here we see it on the 30 minute and this is a this is a really long candle. So here we see the the trailing stop uh, and here we see Apple declining. So it looks like we made the right decision. And we're going to look for Apple to find support and then look to buy it back to the upside. Now, what we could do is we could buy a put on Apple and trade it back down. But I don't think that's what the market has in store today. And if Apple finds support here and starts to move back up to the, to the upside again, uh, at that point, then, you know, we'll look at buying to the upside, but on a five minute chart, not on a two minute. So let's go to a five minute chart and see if we can find an entry. Any questions so far about what's happening and what we're doing? So two trades on Apple so far, uh, one favorable, one not so favorable. Uh, the result is Total account gain of 6.96% for the day so far. So this looks like it might be an entry back to the upside for Apple. It's finding support here on the 200-day on this five-day EMA. Uh, I forget what this price level is. I should note this. Uh, let me see what I can find here on my chart. So 30 minute. I don't know what that price level is. I drew it for some reason. So I'm going to get rid of it because I don't know what it represents. Because I didn't mark it. All right, so Apple is finding support here. This is a five minute chart. And if we look at a 30-minute chart, move this out of the way. We may have to wait until it comes back here. But if Apple finds support here, this would be a good entry. So the last transaction sold Apple at 179 is currently at 149. 
So we'd be able to get a, a decent price here. Just want to make sure this holds. Uh, we've got, this is the beginning of the move. I'm looking at a falling VIX. I'm going to buy back into Apple. Uh, I can buy it cheaper than what I sold it for. So I'm happy with this trade, buying it on this decline. This is the first real opportunity uh, for a decline because it opened and it went down. Then it moved up. Now it's declining and finding a way to build a base. So we're going to just see if we can't trade Apple again to the upside using this as support. But what we will do here is we will not let Apple, uh, if Apple falls below the five-day EMA, then we would probably look to exit. So let's go with a two-minute chart to make sure that we are tracking this properly. So we've got a consolidation here, which is okay. We look to find support at 157.37. And we get a close. Well, we've got a lot of support here. We've got the 157.37. We've also got the 157.15. And then we've got the opening high. So we look for Apple to find support here on the opening high. If we get a candle that closes below 157.07, uh, then we'd have to look at taking an exit. And this would be a failed trade. We do have a falling, we have a climbing VIX here. All right, so this is an algorithmic support level, which is really key. And then we've got the 20-day EMA, and then we've got the opening high. So this is really strong support. So if, it fall, if Apple falls through here, it's likely to continue declining. And it has quite a ways to fall to get back to this 154. So we don't want to give up all of our gains. Again, entering on a five-minute chart and watching for exit on a two-minute chart. So based on what I'm seeing here, there should be strong support for Apple in this area. This would be considered a demand zone. We've got this mini consolidation here and then this strong move to the upside. So Apple should hold in this area. And this is the opening high. So we're not looking for, we don't want to close below the opening high. So this algorithmic support is coming into play. We anticipate these are machines that are buying Apple. Or selling. But this is a key area of support and resistance.
All right, so we don't want to close below the opening high. Let's take a look on a five minute candle and see what we have. All right, so we can't tell anything about support there. So we're giving back our giving back our gains. The last leg of support is at 200 AMA. And as much as I hate to do this, So we're in this demand zone for Apple. A lot of volatility. I don't like, we are still above the VWAP, so it's still bullish. I don't want to give back my profit. I don't want to over trade either because that just means that the fees eat into our gains. Looks like the VIX is falling. It's getting rejected here. So I'm going to let that keep me in this Apple trade a little bit longer than I normally would stay. And the fact that I can see on the I can see on the VWAP. that we're still bullish. So that's helping with my decision-making as well. So using the VWAP as a gauge. All right, so it looks like we're going to hold. We need to get above this five-day EMA and above this algorithmic resistance. All right. Uh, the falling VIX gave me some confidence that we might be okay. So just going back to Apple. We're not out of the woods yet because we're not above this resistance. But it looks like based on the falling VIX and the fact that we're still bullish above the VWAP, 
that we are still okay in this trade. We're in this demand zone. So a demand zone simply means that there are buyers. And if Apple falls through to the downside, then this becomes a supply zone. And the way you identify those is you look for a mini consolidation. And then you draw from the top of the body to the bottom of the wick if it's on the upside. If it is a demand zone, if it's a supply zone, it's just the opposite. Well, actually, you would always draw from the top of the body to the bottom of the wick. So, so in this gray area, uh, as a demand zone, this simply says this is where the buyers are. And this is where the stock should hold up because buyers are going to step in here and see this as an opportunity to buy again to the upside because we're up here. It falls down. So people were buying here, it took off, it came back, and they're now adding to their position. That's based on certain psychology. Um, and if it falls through again, this becomes a supply zone. So sellers would then be selling it off in this area. So we're gonna keep this area open on our screen. We're gonna take it across so we can keep it as a as an indicator so ideally once apple takes off out of here this would be another opportunity to buy it uh, to the upside but we're not going to add to our position we're just going to stay with what we have All right, so it looks like the trade is still good. So I'm going to go back to my primary indicators and load the ATR trailing stops, by the EMA, et cetera. And we are out of time. It's uh, 1044. So any questions uh, about this trade? My plan is to stay in this trade until about 160, and I'll show you why. So looking at a 30-minute chart, you can see I've marked the first ATR trailing stop. This is the one on the 30-minute chart here at 158.35. So we need to get through that level. That's a key level. We've hit it once. I'm anticipating next time we hit it, we should break it. And then on the one hour chart, there's another eight year trailing stop here at 160. So that's gonna be the next level. Now, if we break that, then there's a 200 day EMA here at 161. And on the four hour, what do we have? So not a whole lot here on the four hour. So that 160, is our target for the day here on the one hour chart. And that's where we're gonna focus. So once we hit that target at 160, uh, we're gonna probably be done with Apple unless of course it gives us some indication that there's something else to expect. Now we hit that level like this, we'll watch and if for some reason Apple is able to push through that 160 and then find support, we'll stay in the trade until we see some indication of reversal. Uh, but our target is 160. So David, Princess, any thoughts, any questions? No, thanks Richard, great job. Um, there's no economic news for like two weeks. So in other words, no bad news <laughs> for two weeks. So. Yeah, I think you're right. The market should rally from here. Well, um, I'm you know I've have a gain now of ten percent on this Apple trade, so I'm back up to nine percent my total account value. What's really interesting is I was at thirteen percent before I bought this. So if I had taken my profit, uh, you know, it would have been good. But at least we were able to make another trade and to get in and to make the right decision and to not be shaken out 
by this move down. I mean, that's really key is letting the chart uh, dictate what you do. You know, emotionally, I really wanted to sell here because I'm, I'm like, man, I need to protect my capital. But as I'm watching, um, it didn't break any of these levels that would give me any reason to get out. So okay, that, that, that's a beautiful bull flag right there. So if you'll take the bottom and measure that to the top of the pole, that's your flagpole. And that yep. that's how you measure when it breaks out above this, this last candle, you take that and, and uh, add, add, add the length of, of the flagpole onto that. And that's, that's where it'll go. All right, so let's see. You're saying start here at this low or start here? That, yeah, one. that low. That low, that's your pole to the top. Right. So we're talking about that's uh, 154. No, that's 154.30. All right, 154.30. Right. And then the top here is 159.17, right? Okay. Fifty nine point seventeen. So that's four dollars and eighty seven cents. The difference. Right. Then it, so it, when it breaks above that high, you yes. add the the five whatever it was. All right. So if it breaks this one fifty nine seventeen and then mm -hmm. find support there, then you would add that to the one fifty nine the four eighty seven to the one fifty nine seventeen. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to add that here. So 487, 4.8, 4 4.87 plus 159.17. So that's a target of 164.04. That's going to be my new target, 164. I'm going to try to trade it up to that. And I'm going to sit in this. There you go. If it breaks through. So if it breaks above it, right. Yep. All right. So thank you so much for that, David. You're welcome. Princess, any questions about what we've talked about so far today and where we are? No, I understood what you was doing with the trade. That was good because I would have jumped out. <laughs> um, but then you said you enter on the five minute, but the five minute is slower than the two minutes. So um, you want, I understand you want to get out quick because you want to um, take your capital and go. So entering on the five minute is slower, but what you can confirm entry. Yes. So, and, and really it's a disservice to, to actually exit on a two minute. The idea there is you're scalping uh, and we're not scalping. So, so to be quite honest, what I would do here is I would actually go to a 30 minute chart. And I would use a 30 minute chart. Now, uh, if I'm going to be trading this for the rest of the day, not going to be buying anything else, uh, but this one trade, I would use a 30 minute chart to help guide me. So yeah, don't, don't, don't use that two minute rule uh, unless you're scalping. And we were not scalping today. I was looking for an opportunity to do that on the first trade because, you know, I, I bought it. I don't know where I bought it, but I bought it somewhere around here and I didn't want to give up the capital. And then when I started to fall, really, I, I didn't want to lose. So I went to a five minute chart for early warning. But the reality is five minutes is probably good because otherwise you kind of get whipsawed around. Right. I mean, it makes you crazy if you're on a two minute chart or a one minute chart. So stick with the five minutes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, but the key here too, though, is this demand zone. I didn't see, I wouldn't see this on the five minute chart. So I saw it on the two minute. And that was really helpful. So when I saw this, this mini consolidation, that's really, that's what that is. We got this move up and then we got this mini consolidation here. Uh, then that signaled to me that this was going to be an area where there were buyers, but I wouldn't see that on the five minutes. So when I drew that, that became very helpful even on the five minute chart. So now I just want to stay above 
this gray area here. I don't want to fall below the gray triangle or rectangle. So I'm good with this trade. I'm not going to do anything else uh, until I exit this trade. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to average down. I'm not going to average up. I'm not going to find buy, you know, look at anything else. I'm going to keep my eye on Apple. And once I'm out of this trade, then I might consider another trade. Or if I've been able to reach the target that we just talked about, uh, if we, again, break through this high of 159.17, I can trade this to 164, I'm going to be done for the day. Uh, I'm not going to put any more capital at risk because at that point, I would expect that my account will be sufficiently above, you know, uh, or at least very close to a thousand bucks. So I'm going to join Dr. A's room on um, Clubhouse, and I'm sure we'll be talking about SPY, and Apple is closely correlated to SPY. So I'll be talking about my Apple trade in that room today. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's Mother's Day, Princess. Happy Mother's Day to you. And we will not be meeting on Sunday. Uh, the following Sunday we will, but I hope that uh, you have a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. RJ. Okay.